Hey there, thanks for tuning in. You're watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brothers, and today I'm gonna run through my top 10 favorite bikes. Stick around. So this video concept comes from a viewer, and I had a viewer reach out to me and say, hey Kyle, why don't you give us the top five or top 10 of your favorite bikes that you've tested to date? And I looked through all the bikes that I have personally owned and tested, or owned or tested. There have been a couple of bikes that I've tested that I didn't own. Beta loaned me one, and um, Husqvarna loaned me one. And of all those bikes, there was 23 different bikes that I've done in the last uh, eight years, okay? And I've learned a ton of things about different uh, bikes in the last 10 years, about four strokes and two strokes and engine displacement and all these different things. And I decided, I, I came up with a list, I, I looked at all of the bikes that I've had, and I came up with my top 10. Now, here is, here is kind of the, the ground rule for the top 10. It's not necessarily the ones that I kept for the longest, it's not necessarily the ones that ended up being, um, you know, the best value overall. These are just the bikes that I enjoyed riding the most when I was out there on the trail, out there in the mountains, out there in the desert. These are the bikes that I enjoyed and had the most fulfillment on and the most fun. So uh, this is just my list and uh, you can rip me to shreds down in the comments, but this is kind of how I feel about my top 10. There are 13 other bikes that I tested that are not in this list. So if you're on this list, if, the, if your bike is on this list, that means I really liked it. It was in the upper echelon of the, of the bikes that I've done. So here we go with number one. Number one, I've got a tie actually, and it's kind of like a two-way tie, maybe even a four-way tie, um, but you'll understand why I say it. It's tied between a 27, my number one bike, 2017 or 2018, because they didn't really change them, 2017 or 2018 KTM 250, or 300 XC. Now, I can already see you guys exploding and saying, Kyle, saying, Kyle, that was ridiculous because you just gave us four bikes as your number one pick. And I understand that that sounds a little bit funny, but let me explain. It's so hard for me to differentiate uh, between the 2017s and the 2018 KTM XC lineup because they're essentially the same with just window dressing improvements. So, then, so, so now I've got the 2018 and the 2017s. And then the, between the 250XC and the 300XC, it's literally like trying to pick my favorite child. I'm not going to do it. I've been riding the 250s recently because I love the challenge that they give me, but the 300s are amazing. Uh, so anyway, number one bike as far as just loving it is the 2017 slash 2018 KTM 250XC or the 300XC. That's my number one pick of funnest, most fun, most enjoyment bike that I've had. Favorite bike to date. Number two, my second favorite bike. And again, I've got a little bit of a tie here. I'm gonna go with the Husqvarna TE250i. This was the bike that uh, Husqvarna allowed me to test. It's a fuel injected bike. It was the fuel injected 250 that came for model year 2018. That one was amazing. And it's kind of a tie with the KTM 250 XCW TPI because those bikes were essentially the same thing, only with a different, you know, differences in linkage down below on the shock. So those bikes were incredible. They ran so crisp. I know that it is the future of two strokes. If they happened to have, um, the XC gearbox for where I ride, it might have eclipsed and become my top number one overall favorite. But right now, just because I prefer the gearing of the XC line, I'm placing those bikes second in my list. Number three, it was the 2017 Yamaha YZ250X. People ask me if I like that bike and I say, no, I didn't like that bike. I freaking love that bike to this day. That YZ250X is still the screensaver on my video editing computer, the main computer that I use. I love that bike. The forks were amazing. The bike was awesome. It was a little bit high on the first gear. It lacked a couple of things, like it didn't have electric start and stuff, but the just overall fun factor that I had on the YZ250X put it at my number three all-time favorite bike. It was awesome, I love that thing. I've got a soft spot in my heart for it. And if you've got a YZ250X, consider yourself lucky because that is an amazing, amazing machine. My phone goes dead, okay. <clears throat> Number four, 
It's a 2015 KTM 300 XC. That was the first 300 XC line that I, 300 XC bike that I had, that 2015 300 XC, and it really opened my eyes to a little bit different gearing ratios, and I absolutely loved that bike. Up to that point, I thought that it was the best bike that I had ever ridden, most well-rounded. Now, people knock on it because it had the four CS forks. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a big problem with the four CS forks on that bike, but a lot of people kind of didn't like it, but I loved it. Had plenty of power, had the perfect gearing. It was an all-around joy to ride, and it was my number four favorite bike. Number five, it was my 2012 KTM 300 XCW TPI. That was the bike that I recently did a video maybe a couple months back about how it changed my life and it really did. The 300 XCW is the king of the enduro single track. That sucker is tried and true and proven. And I've got, I've got a 300 XCW TPI version right here that I'm leaning on. I'm not putting this bike in the top 10 because this bike I have not ridden yet. Uh, for those of you that know, I've, I tore my ACL exactly 60 days from the day that I'm filming this uh, video and I'm just over six weeks post my ACL surgery, reconstruction surgery. So I haven't ridden this bike. So the 300 XCW TPI is not on this list because I haven't ridden it. But that 2012 300 XCW is my number five favorite bike. It was amazing, changed my life. They are awesome, awesome bikes. Electric Star, all those things. They didn't really change a ton between 2011, 12, 13, 14. Um, but I put the 2012 300 XCW um, as my number five favorite bike. Number six, it was the 2017 Sherco 300 SEFR. This is my first four stroke. You'll notice that all the other bikes previous to that were all two strokes. And I gotta admit, I just, I've ridden a lot of, four, I've owned a lot of four strokes. I've owned as, just about as many four strokes as I have two strokes, maybe just a couple less four strokes than the two strokes. But that 300 SEFR was amazing. And, and just saying, it, uh, the thing that I loved about it was it's almost the perfect amount of power for a four stroke because it doesn't have too much power where it's going to get you in major trouble, but it has enough power to get you through anything. The motor was awesome on that bike and the forks were good. I think they had the Explore, the WP, WP Explore 48 forks and open cartridge fork. I had no problem with it. When I first was on the bike, it felt a little bit skittish and a little bit, it was really, really quick and felt extremely light and nimble when I was riding it. And then I dropped the forks down in the triple clamps a little bit and it made the bike, it made the bike more stable while not sacrificing too much of the, of the quickness. And I loved the Sherco 300 SER. Awesome, awesome bike. And my first uh, bike on this list and it landed again at number where I ended up putting it, number six. Number six was the Sherco 300 SEFR. Awesome bike. Number seven. Number seven is another four stroke and it was the KTM 250 XCF. It was a tw the 2016 model. So KTM two is 2016 KTM 250 XCF. That bike was a literal joy to ride. And I just had, I just had an, an absolute, an absolute blast. I just wanted to make sure I didn't mix up the order. I had an absolute blast on that bike and it really opened my eyes to how great, just unbelievably great, the 254 strokes are. The 254 strokes are my favorite four strokes. I mean, if you take the three, the Sherco that I was just talking about before, because most of the people, most manufacturers don't make a 300 four stroke. So you kind of have to take that and set it aside. But the 254 strokes are unbelievable. And I think so many people are doing themselves a major disservice by not looking, giving a good hard look into that two, into those 250s. That was an awesome, awesome bike. Number eight, it was the 2015 Yamaha YZ250FX. This is also a four stroke. It was incredible. When you got on that bike, you could tell immediately that this motor and this chassis and this suspension setup was all about racing. It was race bred. It wanted to go fast. It wanted to push hard. And it was really, really cool. I rode that bike right next to kind of having a 450, a YZ450. F and the 250, man, what a joy it was to go from a 454 stroke down to a 254 stroke because then I still had the great forks, the Kayaba Triple S forks on the front of that thing, but you, ha you could just get a fistful of throttle out of a corner and instead of wheeling it over, you would just like get traction and go. And it was an absolute joy. So my, that bike, I believe, oh, what did I list that? I listed that as number eight, yes. My 2015 Yamaha YZ250FX, awesome awesome bike.
Number nine, number nine, this was another bike that was uh, loaned to me by Beta. This was the 2017 Beta 300RR. Now, a lot of guys, a lot of guys thought I didn't love the 300RR and I didn't, I, I wasn't jumping out of my skin on the 300RR because so many people had built it up to me so much that it was a little bit of a letdown when I actually got on it because I had been riding like 2017 KTMs that had counterbalance motors and some like some, and some things like that. So so moving over to the 2017 Beta, there was a little bit more vibration there and it was just a little bit different thing. The bike is not necessarily exactly designed for me as a rider, but overall that bike was an extremely solid package. And I have, I have no problems of listing it at number nine on my all-time favorite list because they did basically everything right with that. There was a couple little things. I didn't love the brakes. I didn't love, I could never quite get into a, uh, the, uh, my happy place on the forks, but overall the thing was awesome. It, was, it had tons of power. It was a little bit lower to the ground, which makes it really awesome. Uh, for a lot of riders that have a little bit shorter inseam than me, I'm six feet tall. So if you're shorter than six feet tall, if you're like 5'10", 5, 5, uh, 5'8", 5, 5'9", the Beta 300RR is going to be awesome for you and it doesn't lack for power and you can adjust anything on the bike. You can tune the suspension the way you want it. So that bike came in at number nine on my all-time favorite list, the Beta 300RR. And last but not least, I had to round out something in the top 10 here, and it was the KTM 150 XCW. So this bike was really fun because it it's very, very light. Now, the XCW line is, is a little bit, uh, has a little bit lower first and second gear, and that works, that actually suits the 150 pretty well. Because the 150 doesn't have a lot of low end torque, as you can, as you can understand, it's a 150 motor. And so the, the XC gearing on that bike works, in my opinion, a little bit better, or the XCW gearing, in, excuse me, the XCW gearing works a little bit better on the 150. Uh, and so I ended up enjoying that. And the thing that was fun about that bike that made it a little bit different is, it gave you an extra challenge because you had you had to push the thing hard, you know, push the thing harder than like a 250 uh, two-stroke or, or a 300 two-stroke because you didn't have as much horsepower and you didn't have as much torque, which means you had to keep the bike up in the RPMs. It also is the lightest bike that I have tested to date, and you can feel that when you're riding it. So it's it feels kind of like a mountain bike. So 150 XCW is a 2017 model. It was KTM. Uh, that rounds out my top 10. So that rounds up my top 10. I know it was KTM and Husqvarna Heavy, and that's because honestly, those guys are putting out, putting more money into R&D. Like seriously, I don't know the numbers exactly, but I would hazard a guess that KTM over the last five to seven to 10 years, KTM I think per year is putting more money into research and development development than all the other like, like uh, Japanese manufacturers combined. I don't know that for the case. I just look and see with their production cycles how they put out basically a new bike every single year and sometimes twice a year in the motocross segment and that trickles down to their enduro line and they've got a ton of models in their enduro and off-road line which, is, which makes some of those bikes perfectly suited to me which is why so many of them are just awesome, awesome bikes. Um, I'm excited next year, hopefully when my knee gets better, to test the Honda CR250RX, CRF250RX. Um, if if uh, some of these other manufacturers want to put out some bikes, I also want to test the Gas Gas, um, and I want to do another couple of betas and some different things. There's a ton of bikes out there. So anyway, those are that's my top 10 for right now. Uh, like it or leave it. Leave your comments down, down below what you think. What did I miss? What did I mess up on? Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're getting the notifications when I upload a video. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I do some cool stuff over there. And if you want to support these videos, you can always go to Patreon. I've got, an, I've got a page over there where you can become a supporter of this page. Also, keep in mind that every once in a while, we do dirt bike giveaways. We'll be selling shirts kind of like this or hats or different products where you can enter to win your very own dirt bike. So until next time, uh, keep riding. Get some riding time in for me because over the summer, I can't do any riding because of this uh, ACL recovery. And I expect you to get the riding in for me. Thanks guys.